Hello there, my name is Terry, and you're listening to the Animation Industry Podcast. And I just wanted to say thanks for listening to this podcast. Today I'm chatting with two guys who made a game. Those two guys are Will Todd and James Carba, and they're the makers of Thank Goodness You're Here, which is the name of the game, and it's this absurdist slapstick comedy game set in this town called Barnsworth in Northern England. Now, I originally met Will and James because I'm one of the animators on the game. Uh, You might have seen me post it on Instagram and whatnot. And if you haven't heard of it, your required homework for this evening is to go check it out and report back to me in the morning. This game is one of the most fun projects I have ever worked on. The humor combined with the silly, slappy, bouncy, and downright ridiculous character designs, along of course with working with the excellent chaps that are Will and James, was such a delight. And I'm so happy I got to be part of this game, and I'm so happy to grill Will and James on why they ended up making this crazy thing. Now, in our chat, they're going to share how they got semi-famous for another free game that they made a few years ago, which uh, a lot of YouTubers like to kind of play for its shock value, and what it took to develop this indie game, thank goodness you're here, on their own, pitch it to distributors, get picked up, get funded, and make something that's going to be available on PC. PlayStation 5, and Switch later this year. So without further ado, let's jump in. Hello, James. Hello, Will. Hello, Cole Supper boys. How are you? Hello, Hello, Terry. (laughs) Very good. Hello, I feel like I'm on like a kid's show. Hello, Terry. Hello, James. (laughs) It's Terry the animator. Come to visit. Yeah, what's up? And it's James oh, and fun. Will, the, the game devs who are probably tired and just and just want to go to sleep. <laughs> Usually, yeah, yeah. We're doing all right. We're doing okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's so well, weird talking, we've just been talking for like five minutes. <laughs> it's like, hey, Terry, look who's just come in. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I, I originally found out about you guys because I played The Good Time Garden, where you're a naked little squishy thing. And you go around slapping other naked little squishy things. I don't even know how I found it. I know how I found it. I saw James. I saw on your Instagram. I saw a a twin squishy thing pooping out like a little baby thing from the game. Do you know what I'm talking about? This little. And I was like, "What the heck is this? I've never. I don't know what this <laughs> is." And so I immediately went and played it, and then started following you. And then randomly, my friend sent me this job application she found she was like hey this looks like an animation style you would like terry and they're hiring for a video game animator you should you should apply and i was like what the heck it's these guys <laughs> so no. i applied I and then that. i worked on your game I thought you did yeah i thought like, i didn't know that you knew like how it worked before that job application thing yeah but, yeah totally I, I mean the only reason i applied is because it was it was i was familiar with your stuff Cause like people send me job applications once in a while and they're like, Hey, apply to this thing. And I'm like, mm, it's not, it's not my thing. But I, I saw that when I was immediate, I was immediately like, I have to work on this. It's like, yeah. it's like squishy and, and funny and, and like adult silly humor. And it's like right up my alley. So I'm happy we worked together <laughs> for like six months or something. Yeah, me too. Yeah, let's do I think when we saw your portfolio come in, we're just like, Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. It's like us. Blowing out of us. Blowing out of us. Oh no, <laughs> Gooba, Gooba, Gooba. <laughs> So okay, uh, let's roll it back a bit. So why did why did you create Good Time Garden in the first place? Because that was like a free to play game. Did you make any money off of it? You just made it because you were like, let's make a game for no reason and learn. Let's let's us animators learn how to do game dev and just create this thing and see what happens. Like, tell me why you created Good Time Garden in the first place. Well, I think. Um... I've always wanted to make games. That's sort of what I studied at university uh, and and college, um, which are the same thing for you guys over there. But oh, yeah. British people will know what a B Tech means. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and then we um, uh, after we graduated, we like you know, we just hanging out one day and we're like, hey, we should do like a little weekend game jam thing. Yeah, fun weekend project. Fun little weekend project just for the yeah. weekend. Um, and, uh, yeah, so you came up with mine and, and we just sort of sat and 
nice bar room and uh, sweat it out the whole weekend. You mm. drew the little naked guy and yeah. uh, we got him moving around. Yeah. And I think um, when we tried like sort of small projects before that, but then this was the first time where we actually got something like you committed. Yeah, committed and happening and we had him moving around and it like, felt really good and exciting and we just sort of like, yeah. the more stuff we kept putting into it, the more excited we got and the more we felt we'd get out, get out of it. Yeah, yeah. And then we ended up just like through that process of like enjoying the, just putting it uh, hours in after after our day jobs and stuff. Yeah. Um, we kind of like got carried over like a year or so. I think so, yeah, yeah. Um, a long, long time. Yeah. So and at the end, we had, a, we had a video game. We had a video game yeah, for yeah. people to see and play. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we put it out with just like zero expectations on itch.io, which is like a free uh, like gaming platform. And then we expected maybe like, I was like, yeah, we had 2,000 downloads, it'd be great. Mm. And then we got like, you know, that in like the first day or something, maybe more mm. than that. Um, we got to like the front page of r slash gaming. Mm. We're like, oh no, maybe people, people like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we were Suckers. very validated and then we went uh, went on with our lives and that was all we did with it. And Basically, we were yeah. happy for it. Uh, <laughs> actually, we uh, we decided to punish ourselves again and, and do another video game and uh, and, and get stuck in the cycle. So you met, in, you met in university, one of you studied game dev and the other one was an animator and you decided to, to you know, as young, finally free of university and making some money working lads not spend your weekends uh at the bar <laughs> but in a, in a spare room like for a whole year doing this game that's amazing <laughs> um actually we met in school like we were like 13 and we met oh so, you like, met in like high like i guess that's high school yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. in eighth grade wow yeah, yeah. when you're 13 no, seventh you're, grade. Is it, i think it's the same seventh year, grade. i don't know when you're 12 years old, whatever yeah. age that is. Whatever age, I don't know. Okay, so you, you okay, so you're like friends for a long time. You make this game together, you spend a whole year on it, and you just they're like, great, now let's just release it on itch.io and it it gets like how many how many downloads in total has it gotten now? Do you know? Um, I think across like itch and steam, like the last time I checked, which is quite a while ago, it was like uh I think it's about like a quarter of a million now. Numbers, which is it is a free game, so it's kind of like excuse the numbers, but still, that's like yeah, that's that's way, way, way more than way sounds good when you say quarter of a million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two hundred fifty thousand is also a big number. So, yeah, so yeah. how does how did that feel to like release something you'd worked on for a year consistently together, and then just like step away and and see it? You know, two hundred fifty thousand is is big. It like blew up. Like, did you ever think like, oh, I wish I had charged money or like, oh, that was fun. I'm glad people enjoyed it. But like, I'm just going to continue on with my day life. Like, how did that feel? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think you thought about charging money for it. Well, on so on itch that uh, originally it was like kind of pay what you want. Yeah. So like yeah. a donation wire type of thing. Yeah um uh which again we thought like maybe one or two people would maybe give us like a couple of quid but we actually got again quite, quite a bit of money not like you know uh not a huge amount probably wouldn't have covered our salaries for the, the time we spent on it or anything oh, absolutely but, uh, not, no, yeah, no, no one yeah. Amongst us. um uh but yeah that was enough, enough of a vote of confidence that people were like oh it's free but they'd also like will pay for it to uh yeah right to support yeah. Us and stuff um so yeah it was very relevant i think Kind of when you were making it, were you like, I were you intentionally trying to build something that you thought other people would like, or were you just kind of, uh, you know, making something that you guys thought would be fun? Um, I think it was literally because it's that, like, literally, we were in our bedroom, like, well, we'll look spare room doing it. It was literally like what we thought was funny. So, like, even the goblin guy was just like, I can't express how, much, how little thought there was into this whole process. We were just <laughs> like, I just drew a goblin and then animated it, and then we'll make it move around. And then we just kind of like didn't just didn't think about it proper, but just like built out this world kind of just by like saying the first stupid thing. I think the, the other day I was like home for Christmas, and I was looking through like some old sketchbooks, and I found like the design document for the Gutan Garden, which is just a list that was like we must have decided in one day. It was like boob man, tongue fat, slappy bum boy, and that was like the characters. And then we must have decided those up top, and then just like built out the thing from there. Um, 
can you for people who are listening who haven't played it uh because i'm just wondering if you can give like a one or two sentence overview of what this game is because like if you google it or like youtube it people include it in like horror games and like stuff like that i don't know if you've seen uh yeah. or like the most disturbing game you ever play like can you just give a, a short overview of this game itself um, you are a naked goblin boy born from a, a flower in a strange pink like throbbing world and you find food for your friend and like meet some <laughs> little characters and guys. Little guys. Yeah. <laughs> little girls maybe. I don't know. It's very ambiguous. Yeah. Everything's nude, but in not uh not an erotic way. Not an erotic way. No. Just in a natural way. Yeah. Just in, uh, it's, I don't know. I guess I could add like it's a puzzle. It's a puzzle game. It's like find the item, find the right item, figure it out, and deliver it, and then do the next stage. Kind of, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's barely a game. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's from the I mean, game design school of game design. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you created this fun project. People seem to like it. Then you go off on your own careers for a while. And then what inspired you to, to make this next game that you've been spending years on now, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's been years. Well, I think we, we had the, the first like inklings of the, the idea for this new one mm -hmm. before the good time garden came out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we were, we were just chatting about what that could be and the, the, the idea of these like vignettes as a concept that we kind of like cut quite harsh between. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we got excited about that prematurely. Um, but then obviously wrapped up the good time garden, finished that. Um, and it took us a little while to get ramped back up again and mm. kind of like, you know, ride the come up and come down of, uh, of releasing the first thing and then, mm. Uh, get it together to start putting a new prototype together. Yeah, I can't remember when we started like in full force, but then like as soon as we like just decided it just sort of happened. Yeah, I think like most things in in like Cold Supper, I guess, as a project, it's been like we just started doing it and then it just became <laughs> yeah. like normal for us to be doing th these things or like in, in, yeah. in whatever. And it was just sort of like very gradual, but also at the same time, all of a sudden, process. Yeah, yeah. So at what point did you, did you like take it more seriously and say like, we're going to quit our full-time jobs to like work on this idea we have together and take it to the next level and make it something that is going to be like our career. Cause that's a big jump to be like, cause I, I like, I don't know too much about like where you're working beforehand, but I know you're work I know James, you were working at a studio before. Yeah. So like, yeah, we both had, um, yeah, proper day jobs. Um, I can't, can't remember when I quit mine. I think it was very happy to quit mine yes <laughs> so, so at what point did you quit though like had you been developing uh like thank goodness you're here for a while or yeah so so we had thank goodness you're here was like um or what it was called at the time was um in development like the demo for like a, a few months mm. uh and then i think we we started really taking it seriously when we got the first offer of funding and as mm. soon as that it was like it was we even though we had the success of the first thing, it was still this sort of like um, moonshot of like, all right, let's go for funding. No one ever gets this. It's, it's like, it's so hard to get, uh, you know, a published deal and, and like funding for any kind of budget. But we thought it's just like, let's just shoot for it. And, you know, the worst that can happen is mm. we've done another thing. Mm. Um, I think I was a little more expectant than you. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we'll pitch and, it'll be, and we'll pour away. We've completely fine, which is a terrible way to think. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, I was like reading all the horror stories on like r slash gaming of like, uh, yeah, yeah, I quit my job and I've like, <laughs> wasted all my savings and now I'm, I'm, I'm bankrupt. Um, uh, so yeah, I guess I was like, I was still, I was optimistic, but I was like, oh yeah, this is going to be really difficult. Yeah. But then, yeah, I think as soon as we got like the first offer of like, it was really should, difficult to be fair. But yeah, for sure. Yeah. But as soon as a, yeah, a, a publisher was like, we will give you this money that you need to do it full time. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. right. It's a real thing. Okay. It's, it's going to happen. And I think from that point, we were both like pretty confident that like, all right, if not this deal, then something else. And then someone's going to give us the money to do it. And then yeah. Yeah, from then on, we were just like, all right, pretty much all in. So like the first person to say like, here's some money, it gave you like a lot of validation that you were on the right track. Um, 
how do you, okay so like say i want to develop a game right now and i've got something going on like how do i even start to pitch or like find funders like that like like you're i know you're you're explaining like how somebody like is offering you money but like how did that conversation even come about in the first place so um yeah i think you can already speak to like the way we've done it um and it is also the way we recommend that like um is finish something of like some sort of like substance yeah. first the the what everyone says is you finish like 10 games do 10 little games before you do anything big right 10 games um, yeah, that's like the kind of like the general advice, which we didn't do, and it's um we probably have like paid the, paid the price for it, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think we benefit from having done and finished uh, the Good Time Garden, putting it out there, and having a good perception to it. And when we released that, we did then straight away go to publishers and say, "Hey, mm. what do you think of this?" Oh yeah, because we're going to pitch our next thing to you, and it was sort of like we yeah. did kind of tea things Interesting. up. Interesting. How do you even website. get in contact with publishers? You just like go to their website and find their email and say like, "Hey, we're just two guys. We're just two guys who made this thing, and we're going to make another thing. Hope you like us. Bye." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's I mean, it eh? <laughs> like the, um, the, yeah, they do accept like a lot of cold pitches and stuff. Interesting. But I think you maybe need like a bit of like an in, or definitely you can help. But yeah, we find especially with like the bigger ones. They were like easy to approach, like someone the ones that you might not have heard of were then very hard to get in contact with and were quite dismissive off of hand. But then, yeah, like, yeah, I guess ones that know what they're doing. They've also yeah. got like a dedicated person to answer the email address, I guess. Sure, yeah, yeah, for sure. But, um, the big thing, the big like takeaway, like our approach, which I think is a good one if you're pitching a game, is like if you're cold calling, just try and get your game in a GIF, try get whatever the game is, mm -hmm. you can get that in a GIF and stick that top of the email. Yeah. And they're right from that, then like you're off to a good start, basically. Interesting. I would think that would trigger a lot of spam filters, maybe. Like that was my that's my first thought. But like I, I guess that makes sense if you can just like showcase what it is visually immediately rather than like have a text mm. heavy thing that they gotta read and then click on stuff. Like that's a lot of work and they probably get there there's probably like a thousand people emailing them a day. So like, okay, so your style like immediately stood out to me when I saw it as like this fun, like interesting. It's going to be like silly, wacky, a little bit adult humor thing. Like, can you talk me through what this game is actually what what this game is? Like, can you just like do a little pitch of like what people can expect, I guess, or like what you're developing? Oh, thank goodness. Also, now I'm thinking that maybe like the replies we didn't get is because it went to spam. <laughs> <laughs> Should have had this conversation before. <laughs> yeah, 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 I think it'll work. Um, yeah, so Lewis, you're here. You play as a salesman stranded in a surreal northern English town of Barnsworth. Uh, and you like arrive early for a meeting with the mayor. <clears throat> uh, and then you, kinda can, you can kill time by uh, like exploring the town and completing like a series of bizarre odd jobs for the residents that um that live there uh that's like what you do is like a tagline but like it's all about kind of like this kind of a explorey comedy arty type of this is a horrible description yeah i mean <laughs> no i'm, uh, I'm so, yeah you're right that was a good description no it was it wasn't about yeah you were on the right track we were, um, yeah it's uh it, it's it's a uh, comedy experience yeah, we're I'm also about it, the, the the pitch, and we've never got it right. <laughs> um, uh, which is a wonder we haven't managed to get any funding. I think well, you're a salesman with a mayor mayoral meeting, and you arrive in town early, and you can yeah. complete odd jobs for the residents, which yeah. end up in like slapstick situations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, someone cleverly has described it as like basically like sketch comedy, which hadn't really occurred to us before. But like that's kind of what it is. You sort of yeah, it's like a game version of a sketch comedy. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, is there is there another game out there like this, like that you can think of? Um, there's like games similar, like Night in the Woods is kind of the format's a bit similar, but it's not really like it's a different tone of voice. Yeah. Um, there's definitely games that like focus on this like goofy jokes and exploration. Hmm. Um, I don't know that. I can't think of a good example. Yeah, I think I think we didn't really go into this with the mind of like, oh, we'll do this sort of game, or we'll do this but a game. It was very much like we had these ideas that we wanted to explore and this style, like the house style, and we sort of like um, 
sort of moved from from that instead of being like we'll mm. do our own spin on yeah know, yeah this genre it's not really a genre game and doesn't have too much in the way of like challenge mechanics yeah so although like you could loosely call it a puzzle game we wouldn't maybe like advertise <laughs> it to puzzle gamers i suppose yeah 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 it's a puzzle so, game it's so puzzle. i guess a, a big question about like gameplay if it's not like it's not like hitting on a genre and it's more of a standalone thing like how do you how do you develop the gameplay and know it's going to be like fun for somebody else to play? Because like, you know, you're creating this to uh, essentially sell it, I suppose, because you have a publisher and, you know, it's on, it's on these platforms, etc. How do you know that people are like when you're developing the game mechanics, how do you know that people are going to like enjoy and find it, f find it fun, I guess? Um, it's not a guarantee. <laughs> it's <certainly> not guaranteed. <laughs> but like, I mean, like, okay, so say you have situation A where you're like, okay, the character could go this way and do this thing, and then mm. and then you refine it versus like a situation B where you're like, well, instead of doing this, they could be doing this instead. Like, how do you decide what's going to be fun and what's not going to be fun and what's like it like, you know, you have different areas in the game and like there's jokes obviously, but like, you know, mm. how how do you how do you decide if the gameplay is what's going to be fun or not for somebody else? <laughs> Yeah, it's tough. And I think um, that was definitely one of the hardest parts of, yeah, the design of it, because mm -hmm. um, because like the verbs are very simple. Um, you can only run around and slap, like you can jump and then slap. That's yeah. The things. So you can um, jump and then, slap. Then to, like, cause change in the, in, in the world and for things to happen, it's like there'll be other characters or other things playing out as a result of you kind of prodding and poking. Yeah. yeah. Which means that like, in answer to like a, a question of like, right, what happens now at the next bit of this game and then after and after, yeah, so it could be anything, so yeah, yeah, it's quite hard to build around that. But in terms of like, um, all right, what's gonna be fun? We basically things are rooted in like the joke or like the yeah. silly voice or the, the or, character, yeah, or whatever the kind of hook is of, of the, I guess, the sketch, yeah, yeah, and then we sort of tease the gameplay out of that. Mm. So as long as like the the joke is is solid. Yeah, so like Mr. There's a fishmonger called Mr. Bish, and he sells fish and cigarettes. It's Mr. Bish's cigs and fishes, and we like the character so much that like, like, okay, how can you interact with Mr. Bish and his cigs? Like maybe you help set up his stall, and then we like start with Mr. Bish and like a stupid voice, basically. Got you. Okay, so it's like it's like you're playing through an elaborate joke constantly. Yeah, yeah, that's the funnest way to tell a joke, right? <laughs> over and over again, for a period of time. Oh no, no I got to slap. I got to slap. <laughs> I got to jump around some fishes to get a cigarette joke. <laughs> I mean, at least for me, like as as like animating on this game, like all the jokes were like very clear to me, and like the the there's a lot of visual gags and stuff like that too. So I, I I'm very excited to play. Okay, you mentioned before that you you kind of paid the price by not creating 10 games beforehand like tell me about the experience of being like just two people with a publisher and having to build a team um and like like professionally i guess mm. yeah that's been a really tough part uh i think because like first of like we we haven't built a game like before apart from the good time garden which is kind of by the seat of our pants so like we don't have like any of the or didn't have any of the like existing like knowledge base well i mean like not knowledge base but like the existing like rules that you'd use to build a game mm. and existing workflows and then we also because the game isn't like other games we don't have like that structure either so it's really like i say like a lot of the development has been like learning how to actually make the game yeah for sure for sure maybe like 60 percent <laughs> yeah yeah a starting amount has been yeah refining processes and like scrapping things and mm. and it seems like every week we like change the way we organize like workflow or like mm. uh, task management or the kind of systems in the game and stuff yeah yeah so like from um like a technical uh, standpoint like the good time garden was like very janky under the hoods so like duct taped together yeah i guess because we did part time but also we we're kind of winging it and learning as we go yeah um, and that held up because it was only like a 30 minute experience in like one space. Whereas this is like way, way more ambitious. Like there are, you know, um, dozens and dozens and dozens of, uh, individual sort of screens or levels. Mm. Um, so like facilitating all that was, 
you know, big learning curve and we have to we have to design things yeah, yeah. and engineer stuff properly from the ground up. Also, like I don't know how to make I still basically don't know how to make games. <laughs> like, I'm an animator, like start as an animator, uh, and now I'm like a game developer uh through working with the world, but like um yeah, I've like uh, I started the project with like out you know, like programming knowledge and I ended the project with even less programming knowledge. <laughs> so I don't know what to do with that world. Uh, yeah, it's like, I, I, uh, yeah, I think in, in a way it's like a strength, but in, in, other, in other ways it's just like, if we'd have worked on projects before, like 10 games, then I'd have learned how games worked and that would have like helped a lot. Um, whereas now like, we've learned how this game works very well but that's it. <laughs> so you don't think this all the learnings you experienced on this game would translate to a new game if you were to create it, unless it was like in the same same world style? Um, some would, I think. Yeah, I think, I think there's quite a lot that would, would uh, yeah, go over, but there's also like very specific sort of like, yeah, in-house terminology and practices and stuff that like, mm. it's very, it's, you know, bespoke ways of developing that are just for, making cigarettes pop out of fish <laughs> yeah, yeah which is like the the like play pen that i've been in for the past three years right um, i've never gone outside of that yeah. and then will's just taking care of me and be like no just don't look under here just you stay in the play pen of the... just, don't oh, just cigarettes <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh okay so so like i was gonna ask you like what was the toughest experience you had during this because this journey because you know like find creating a demo uh finding investors like you know hiring a team learning how to code uh it's like <laughs> i mean i was international so working with people internationally and then uh, yeah. all that stuff like what maybe like give me a timeline of like how everything went down i guess hmm. yeah what was the hardest part the hardest bit <laughs> i think i think well uh, you know generally game development is very hard just kind of yeah as the bottom line but yeah, yeah. i think um I, th I think a lot of the design was probably the hardest part because like i say yeah. we kind of like we weren't working off any existing structure mm -hmm. and when they when the answer to the question of like what happens next in the game is like can be literally anything mm -hmm. um yeah it's, it's very hard to like write and develop off that and then also i, th I think the, the second biggest or not the biggest uh, challenge is just like managing scope and predict and like yeah. predicting how long things are going to take yeah. I don't think we've ever been able to get that right. Um, no, no. I'd say the hardest part is like underestimating the work. Yeah, yeah, for consistently. Sure. So, so, like, what's, ahead, what's work that you would underestimate? Like coding work, or like animation work, or like implementation? Yeah, yeah. Like visible work. Just yeah. visible <laughs> work. Every, well, I, everything. Yeah, I, th I think. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes with, with coding stuff, sometimes it's easy. And I think sometimes it's like, you know way way more uh work than i think is going to be mm. but then with animation stuff it tends to be the case that like it's less like the specific of like oh how long does this one animation take it's like oh how long does a sequence of these characters interacting take mm. and we'll sort of like intuitively say oh it's maybe like a week or so but then when you break it down into its component parts and you get inside of that there are like five weeks of, uh, yeah, of animation yeah. work needs to happen you're like hang on this isn't <laughs> it doesn't add up i can't fit five weeks into it yeah i yeah. think so if you go out to like your question about the timeline it was like build demo and pitch and then i like pitched and then we got kind of uh funding and then we went to like designing the game and then at some point we kind of pivoted to building a vertical slice which is like um one little bit of the game that looks like it's final fidelity it looks like the final finished thing um, but it's only like five minutes long or whatever. Uh, and to build that, like the process was like, I wasn't it, like an animator and I just like built storyboards. And I think we, we just like filled the storyboards with what would happen in that, in each like panel kind of thing. And then just built that, um, which like did work, mm. but it took like, cause it was all like each panel to storyboard is a new level they took so long to build mm. and you're only in them for like 10 seconds. So like, okay, well that took like two weeks and it took 10 seconds. 
what happens if you like <laughs> if you have a hundred of these panels and if like, you want to create a multi-hour experience like how do we uh, yeah yeah the um, maths just doesn't add up to it yeah <laughs> it's not looking good um yeah and also, those early days we also like had like a very like waterfall way of doing things where yeah you just draw everything fine fidelity up top mm. and hand me just like a four <laughs> printouts of uh, all these pngs and i have to somehow <laughs> shuffle them around in the right order and feed them into the computer and, <laughs> and hope something worked out of it yeah um but yeah off, off the back of like yeah we this period of like pre-production and then the vertical slice and then went back to pre-production again realizing we had to change mm -hmm. the way we were working and how things were set up mm. and then i think gradually over, over time we built up like a lot like more robust systems and yep and, and practices yeah yeah and now you hand me laminated uh, <laughs> jpegs <laughs> I put them in the toaster <laughs> and they come out boiling hot. <laughs> but we put them together. This sounds uh, like an experience. <laughs> um, so, okay. So you're, you're, I mean, the game's not out yet. Um, it's coming yeah. out soon. But like, uh, I guess, how has everything changed for you since the game trailer is launched? It's been announced. Like, you know, the game's been marketed. It's backed. It's gonna appear on like legit platforms, like et cetera, et cetera. Like, how has how has the experience been, kind of as this is wrapping up and coming out into the world? Wrapping up's a generous <laughs> <laughs> description of what's happening now. Okay, um, well, it's uh, not you're not starting out right now. <laughs> yeah, sure, no, no, sure, yeah. No. Um, yeah, announcement was really, really good. I think I was, I personally was like quite scared of announcement for a while, um, whereas like. I, think, scared of? I don't know. I sort of I had t tons of confidence up top with like the Good Time Garden and like the pitching and then getting funding and building. And then like when it came to actually like announcing the next big thing, it felt like for whatever reason maybe there was like more expectation, which isn't that true. I mean, the Good Time Garden did okay, but like wasn't. It's not like people were like, "Well, what will Call Silver do next?" It was just kind of like I was. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, was, I think it's just like delivering on, delivering on like, even like to ourselves, like we've worked for three years, here it is, the kind of thing, and then walking it in the daylight. I was scared that it'll look good and then upload it to YouTube, and then I'll play the video and it'd be like 2 FPS. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we was daunting, yeah, for sure. And like, definitely the, the expectations to ourselves is like, a, yeah, because kind of like, we put so much into this. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's it kind of raises the stakes pretty high. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, post, post um, announcement, yeah, it did feel pretty good. Mm. It was a bit of a whirlwind where we went to these um, yeah. uh, like conventions and stuff in, in Germany and the States. And we'd gone from like being in complete secret and yeah. hiding away in a, in a little room on our own mm. uh, for so long to like putting it out in front of people and seeing people play it for the first time in person yeah, was, yeah. was wild. I remember just like, a day at this uh, uh, PAX, uh, this convention. Yeah, just watching people play it. Just I was just foaming at the mouth, just like <laughs> stood behind them. Like, what is that? Oh, do you like it? <laughs> Say you like it, please, please clap. Speak to the mic. So how has how has the response been? Like as you're watching people play it, is it? I personally, I'd be like, I'd be frustrated. I'd be like, no, 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 go over there. You're not doing it right. Like whatever. But like, how's yeah. how's the response been of like? when people have played it or or watch the trailers or things or uh good good give us some time like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i just think like, we, yeah, we've been with it for so long like you know we start out we'll do you know like one one day like years ago probably you said give your wife the best give her big rums big pies yeah uh and then we just keep saying that to each other for ages and we're like is that funny i don't know is that good <laughs> uh, and then eventually like you know someone draws it and then we Get someone to do uh, a really great take of line or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is that this is this is is it working? I don't know. <laughs> and, then, and then when people like we see people laugh at it, we're like, oh my god, okay. It was like this big sort of moment of relief of like, yeah, okay, yeah. it does work. Yeah. And we have seen people like play through the whole thing now and like, yeah, just enjoy the whole experience and it's yeah. scenes, which you know I've been able to just unwind my spine a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't yeah, it just yeah. the best when you tell a joke and somebody else laughs unprompted? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've been telling the joke for three years. <laughs> and, yeah. 
it's good and then like, the other thing is like some stuff doesn't work and it's like that's the thing about the process is that like it takes so long to like build the thing but, like it's like that didn't work well i guess that just doesn't work but that's in the game still uh but touch wood there's not been too much of that i hope yeah yeah because it's so visual and and yes uh it's the joke only works when you can see the full thing and hear the full thing mm. it's impossible to test when it's just like a gray box prototype yeah yeah um so yeah like so kind of like soft um, locked in yeah. i'm curious about you so good time garden is like pretty r-rated i guess even though it's just like cartoon characters and uh thank goodness you're here is also like i don't know what rating you're gonna give it but i'm wondering like did your publisher have any pushback or say in like the content of of the game and like the development of it or was it more like here's 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 like some money go and develop the thing you wanted to originally much more almost entirely the latter i would say yeah they were very panic had been very hands-off like with the creative direction that's been like left it was pretty much entirely yeah it was sure. really nice yeah um there's been like the, th the only kind of notes we've got is like oh in america that's a bad word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, okay. Right. A couple, couple, yeah, a couple of colloquialisms we have here yeah, don't yeah. Uh, don't fly across the board. Yeah, America is very um, censorship friendly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, by and large, like it's been it's been good. I think there are a few exposed uh, penises. <laughs> Just a few. I don't even put in really, um, but <laughs> we'll, we'll see what they're just the writing and how many are there actually. Actually, no. I think that maybe there's one, one. There's one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but you do you do see it, and there is there is penis.png definitely does exist <laughs> and is in the game. So <laughs> they're just they're game assets that that exist in the game, but they don't they don't go into gameplay. Well, they don't feel, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What did, so there's something you animated Terry that was like underneath someone's trousers. <laughs> You like fully animated their underwear or something, and I was like, hang on, this isn't even. <laughs> why did he do this? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> a joke a few jokes in there. You're talking about like I, I put some buddy's underwear underneath, like you never even see it anyways, but I just included it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You animated them with trousers on. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. 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 Why not? Why not? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that I don't I think that was maybe in my animation test. I don't know if it was actually in the gameplay, maybe. Uh, I think you're oh right. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, it was it was in my animation test because I, I was like, yeah. I don't know, I was just having fun. Um how hard was it to find I guess unity or like animators once you because like you know, I'm from Toronto and you guys were living in Europe uh like and there was a whole bunch of international people on the project how difficult was it to find like people that could like match i guess your style and work in unity like i had never like i had played around with unity myself trying to build my own game years ago but like i learned so much as being on the project trying to build my assets in unity like was that a difficult thing to find from people yes yes <laughs> <laughs> very hard i think maybe potentially restricted by the budget but i think yeah. also it's like didn't seem to be specifically in our style. Yeah. Um, yeah. But sort of like the frame by frame, um, yeah, doing things with some cell animation, but with also like some rotation and translation and stuff. Yeah. In an engine, uh, you don't really see it a lot, I think. No. Well, you can see like there's really talented frame by frame animators, and there's this really talented like uh, Unity animators who are great with like kind of more like rigging animation, I guess. Yeah, bone based stuff. But yeah. like, yeah, like bone based stuff. But then like the combination seems to be kind of rare. But also we were like less plugged into the industry a little bit back then as well. Yeah. Hmm. And yeah, like I say, all those budget restrictions. But yeah, it was very difficult. Uh, and um, yeah, we ended up, I think like you and a lot of the animators actually didn't have like any uni experience. Um, so we ended up kind of teaching a, a lot of um, all yeah, you, you made some like hour long tutorials or something. Well, maybe all of them together were like, but you would <laughs> video yourself like doing the things and then I would try to study and match. And then sometimes I would do things in a janky way that didn't work. And then Will would come back a week later and be like, Terry, you did all this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, I can't believe you've not done this right first time with no experience. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's exactly yeah. how. <laughs> we, we probably expected a lot, like um, uh, yeah. way too much, like off. Oh, but and um uh yeah that was a big learning for us because we were just like we we're also 
it was you weren't just learning Unity. It was also um, yeah, specific practices and stuff, mm -hmm. and all like yeah. our mad tool and conventions and everything that we just kind of been scrolling on the side of our cave for uh, <laughs> yeah, two yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes complete sense to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> makes sense. Uh, but it's like a Pip. Uh, like she's another talent animator we've worked with, Pip Williamson. Uh, like we worked with her for like an entire year, and at the end she got like really really good at like working with an engine. But it still took like a year to get kind of well, not took it didn't take a year, but like it took like six months to get to that point. Yeah, totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah, well, for me, it was like uh, it was it was quite a process because like I do the roughs, send them to you, get them approved, then do the cleanup, but then like deconstruct the cleanup into like separate assets, and then push those into Unity, and then rebuild them in Unity, and make sure all the connections are all right. So it was like a it was like a lot of. Like also, it was like my first video game experience too, so it was a lot of uh, learning curve for me as well. So it makes sense that mm -hmm. it was it was tough. And like, I guess talking with other talking with other video game people, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of people that do integration in Unity. There's usually like a separate like uh, separate position that like takes assets and puts them in game. So the animators are just like animating, and then the developers are like just developing. I guess um, I'm wondering this is almost done for you or it's going to wrap up soon are you gonna make another video game is this like a new thing for you are you on the map a little bit more with like who you guys are and who, who cool supper is uh do you have things in the works or are you like we hate video games we're never making another one we're gonna become <laughs> fisher fisherman and cigarette salesman <laughs> i think it oscillates violently between both some, some days it's just like we're so good at this now. We'll just like this we'll make dream job. yeah. Oh, we'll make a thousand new games. A thousand. Um, and then other days, I'm just like, you know, seconds away from throwing my computer <laughs> off the balcony. Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe we'll see how it feels when it's released. That's yeah, I, I think we definitely want a bit of a break. I think is a busy yeah. thing, and then a bit of a you know, a bit of reflection. Mm. And we'll probably get drawn back to being on the computer. I reckon so. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we'll see. See what what happens. Have you both been just working full time on at, at Cool Supper, the game studio, ever since? Like even now, like is it is a full time thing, or are you like when you take a break, are you going to go back into the I guess quote unquote the real world and get jobs again, and then? Uh, yeah, we have full time. We have full time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think take a break. I might. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Take a moped across <laughs> the peaks, <laughs> the moors, <laughs> or something. Yeah. I might get into clay claymation. Yeah. But realize the camera's off for the last <laughs> three months. Yeah. You're gonna get into claymation. That would be rough. No, that sounds even harder than game design. <laughs> <laughs> what? Get out of here. Um, I guess like when it comes out, what do you hope the success of this game is? Like, do you, like do you want it to like? What if it reaches like two hundred fifty thousand downloads? Like, uh, Good Time Garden, or more or less? Like, do you have expectations of how it's gonna go? We have various spreadsheets that you can plug imaginary numbers in. Yeah, we've got really great made-up number generators. Yeah. Uh, Amazing made-up number, number generators. <laughs> yeah, we, we get we get big numbers out if we put big numbers in. <laughs> and we're like, wow, that's like, how many sandwiches could we get with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll put the two. Um, yeah, I, th I think the important thing for us is like, I was going to say like, yeah, just like making the thing we want. Yeah, to admit. Sure. but also critical and financial success. I think it's like, <laughs> yeah, uh, we also want that as well. So I don't know. I think we, we kind of we got high hopes. I think. Yeah, yeah, I think what you can do, like you say, is just try and satisfy that like our creative, like you know, like vision or whatever. And I think it happens when you play. Like when we when we play through the game, there's spots where it's like alarm bells going it's like oh that doesn't feel right for some reason like that's not the thing that we imagined and it's just a case of like polishing all those bits yeah. and then you've got a good analogy where you say like it's almost like there's a big rock you start the big rock and you knock it down to like two bits and you knock that down to bits and it's like just about knocking it all down until you get to like that like plane of sand kind of thing and that's like what you imagined in your head i guess at the start um so i think if you're going to satisfy that like craving Craving for sand, mm. then uh, sand on your head. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Then that's the all you can ask for. And then like, yeah, I mean, it'd be awesome if it's got like millions of players. But see what happens. Yeah, sure. I think I think I think we there's some sort of like mass appeal, but I think we kind of resigned to it being a bit of like an artsy 
um, yeah. thing potentially. Uh, but yeah, I think I, I, a big thing is like it finds it, its audience. I think yeah, that's yeah, yeah. very hard. Like yeah. whatever it, that audience is, as long as like people who are like yeah. as into it as they were at the Good Time Garden. Like we still get emails uh, every now and again from people being like, oh, I really love the Good Time Garden. I show it to my friends and stuff. Mm. You know, I play it every so often or whatever. Yeah. And you do write those emails, but it's still Yeah, yeah, and I do it in character. And, you know, <laughs> and then you, you do it sometimes. So we make each other feel better by role yeah. playing, yeah. But no, I think it's... Uh, no, I, I think just as long as, yeah, someone somewhere <laughs> yeah. plays it on the computer and likes it, yeah. <laughs> It makes sense. I mean, for me, it's like such a, a refined style. Like it's so specific in what it is. I think it finds its own audience, if that makes sense. It's like, and I, yeah. I hope it's a big audience. <laughs> um, I guess one last question for me is like, you know, you have Cole Supper, the the studio name, like you have this, uh, this title under the studio now. Are you going to continue uh, with Cole Supper growing it and like, you know, one day like have a full studio with the uh, permanent employees and and like different things like maybe video games or like other assets um because i know that you're like james i know you're also you've worked on a lot of independent uh like animation things in the past um mm -hmm. or is it like are you going forward as cole supper um i think i think the having a building an empire of stuff and stuff sounds quite intense yeah uh, and judging by how poorly we've managed ourselves, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it being just like there's always an idea that Cole Supper is just sort of a what we span ahead of like our creative endeavors. Yeah, I there's also like a you know the idea of like sustainable practice, which is a very oh, yeah. nice sounding yeah, that thing. Nice. Yeah, it sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds comforting. Yeah, sound that. Um, but yeah, I, th I think I think growth for the sake of it, we're not super keen on. Mm. We won't want to just like you know. I don't think Kelsey is ever taking on truckloads of money and then just like, you know, that's just obligations. 10xing and uh, bringing on those people for the sake of it. I think we, we grow carefully and, um, mm -hmm. and, and gradually yeah. as and when it feels like we, we need to, for whatever it is we're making next. Yeah, it'd be based off the product, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Cool. Saying that, if you are a venture capitalist that's listening to this, um, maybe yeah, we would. We would take your money, and yeah, we yeah, definitely we grow. Definitely we'd, we'd, oh, we grow for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there you oh, go. Yeah, yeah, definitely all the real people for sure that have employed. Yeah. Um, well, that was. I guess that was my last question. Is there, unless there's, do you have any questions or topics you want to bring up still that we didn't chat about, or questions for me? I don't know. Like, is there anything you wanted to say as we as we were wrapping up? How did how did you like working for, for Coles, with Cole Supper? How did I like? Do you want the the nice podcast answer or the gritty truth answer? Oh God! I loved it. <laughs> I was really sad. I was really sad that uh, when it when it ended. I mean, uh, like it was a little difficult working with the the like time the mm. time difference. Like that was the biggest thing because like. I'd be ready at 9 a.m., but then what? That was like what's like evening for you or something? <laughs> there was only like yeah. three or four hours that we crossed over. And so, like, I'd work in the afternoons and then not be able to get any feedback till the next morning. And then you'd message me like in the middle of the night and then I wake up. It was, I think that was difficult. But otherwise, like, I love the style. I love the humor. Uh, it was like really insightful for me to learn Unity. Like, I, I kind of miss that part. <laughs> But um, I don't know. It was great. It was actually a stepping stone for the current job that I have been on for the last almost two years, which is another video game. So um, yeah, I, I'm really excited for it to come out. And it was it, you guys are both funny. <laughs> it was always it was always Man. nice chatting with you guys. <laughs> That's what <I'm> about. <laughs> we can actually stop now. <laughs> uh, That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I think the the time zone was a killer, and also just like. I don't know whose idea was to just be like, all right, let's just get a team of animators to start all on various different time zones in this brand new software and we'll just manage them all and design for them all at the same time. Yeah, I think, I guess we were just kind of kidding ourselves that, I don't know, I don't know, I guess we were just very naive we just didn't as, know, as, yeah, as to yeah. how, how that yeah. would work and like the, the demands that the place on, on everyone um, going both ways. Yeah. yeah, it's been a big, big learning. But yeah. That was the other thing was like designing. For, it took me like the same amount of time to design a thing and then brief somebody else and four other people as it did to just like do the thing. Yeah. 
itself kind of thing, which is a big learning. Yeah, definitely some cases, but I think I think we also got like some really great material. Like, yeah, like Terry, you yeah, yeah, yeah. me our stuff there is like still still slaps some of those character animations. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, that's probably not actually correct. I think I just couldn't keep up front of the design like train. Yeah, I think I think small small stuff definitely it was like it was mm. quicker for you to just do it, but then like the bigger character designs like um, comps and stuff it was. Uh... Yeah, I was a complete kid myself. It was a <laughs> it was a team of ten of like five people doing work for months and months. Yeah. We're talking about. It. <laughs> well, it makes sense. I mean, like you were two guys trying to like manage the whole project while also working full time on the project while also managing people in different time zones. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, like there were there were. Quite a few people around the world um working on it so it, yeah, totally, yeah. it totally makes sense it sounds like a nightmare actually <laughs> it sounds like great yeah like oh yeah i'm working with people all over the world and then it's like oh no i have to <laughs> respond to somebody at 3 a.m and then at 4 p.m and then all this crazy stuff so uh yeah, yeah. yeah i guess that's so like in the future if you were to work on a game again would you do the time zone thing again now that you've figured out you know your process a little bit more or, or you're like we're gonna do locals only um, I, don't know. I don't know the thing is like everyone was really really good yeah which felt like or like a shame that like if we if we if like i don't know if we had a better system in place then the, the bit less of our like of teaching and stuff they could just like shoot off and do tons of awesome animation mm. Um, but it's just a case of like building that system and like how easy that is to communicate to someone. Yeah, I think I think it seems like it does work for some studios, or some indies, and some some bigger ones where they just have, you know, the sun will never set on production because like you know someone's got a bed, someone else is picking something up. Right. Yeah. But I think for that to work, like yeah, the processes have to be just like what a tie. Yeah. I was like we say like the point you guys were on, we were still learning how to make the game ourselves, I suppose. Mm. Um, yeah. So I think, yeah, if we had like a really, really tight production pipeline, maybe we could do, you know, all time zones all the time. Yeah. Sort of thing, but yeah. And Makes so, sense. Yeah. Or at least yeah. like similar time zones, like plus or minus a couple hours, not like 12 hours. Also, beyond the time zone stuff, just like having someone in the room, like Pip, uh, like because she was just in the room with us, it was yeah, just yeah. like, it felt like so, like so much easier just to be like, oh, let's just just point the screen, but like this just needs turning off or whatever. Right. Versus Whereas, like jump on a call. We were using Sync Sketch to like go over each other's animations and like. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of cohesion working working together as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But overall, my experience was was good. Like I said, I miss it, and I'm really excited for it to come out. And I'm happy I worked with you guys because I have been following you for a while, and it was kind of like a. <laughs> Like, I, I remember, like, applying immediately and being, like, I really, 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 really hope they respond to my email. And you yeah. did immediately, like, really fast. Next, that's just we were buzzing though, when we get your email. We were, like, this is it. This is this. <laughs> this is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were really excited. Well, and dang it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And then, like, yeah, I don't know. You guys were very, like, even with the video tutorials and, like, setting up Unity, it was, like, it was it was perfect and very easily so yeah um yeah is there anything else you wanted to you wanted to bring up in the chat what the people should know the creators of thank goodness you're here should they know <laughs> nothing that's fine it could be nothing <laughs> yeah no, I, um i don't know i think um follow your dreams <laughs> stay in school <laughs> uh, don't ever see. Yeah, don't uh, don't make a video game. Don't make yeah, a video yeah. game. Yeah. Um, um. I well, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Any, yeah, any, yeah. any offhand advice? I think I think the the biggest one. I think the turning point for us and what 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 made it work in that initial instance with the good and bad and stuff is we were finally at a point where we could both sit down and just do the thing without yeah. too much friction having looked stuff up. Yeah. I think when I think back to like, you know, other side projects we may have started like with each other or other people, it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, we've got this good, this idea. And also maybe it's kind of like understanding scope and stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. But um, being able to just like, oh, I'm going to do this and you sit down after work, or whatever, and yeah. just like get it done. Yeah. yeah. Without uh, barriers, I'd like say if you're wanting to get into 
I guess, I don't know, maybe any career thing, but maybe yeah, yeah. specifically get yourself to a stage where like you have the understanding enough to be able to just like sit down, sit down and do it. Yeah. Which sounds very obvious, but yeah, <laughs> I, I think maybe four people starting out. Yeah. You know, with that friction, like, you mean? Yeah. They're like kind of maybe overly ambitious for their first thing. Um, <laughs> I mean, it sounds book. obvious, but like I'm on Reddit all the time and people are like, hey, I like animation. Should I, I'm thinking of quitting my job and getting to, and it's like, have you ever animated before? <laughs> like, it's not, don't do that. So it makes yeah. a lot of sense to <laughs> get some synergies yeah. and workflows figured out before you, before you jump ship and, and go full time into this thing. So, yeah, it's that thing like, it's that classic like Ira Glass quote where it's like, um, for the longest time, your skills are just terrible, but your like taste is really good, which is why you got into the thing. So for like the first years of your creative like practice, you're just making like stuff that doesn't align with your taste. It's like nowhere near as good as your taste, so it just feels yeah. horrible. So it's just like getting like over that kind of like threshold. Right. And, like I look back to like, the first animations like I made when I was like like sixteen and seventeen. I'm on, I'm on new grounds and it's just like oh god why I'm looking <laughs> up on new grounds now no it totally makes sense and i haven't really heard that taste level thing or the hourglass before but it's like your taste your taste is higher than your skill level so that's why you keep trying to yeah. push yourself makes sense it's like the reason you got into the thing is like so you have good taste right so yeah yeah you're doing it and then just you're making stuff that you don't like so you like edges and hedges which sucks so what happens when you're really skilled but you have bad taste uh, I think you're really rich, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, maybe then you work for somebody else on their project or something, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I guess, uh, yeah. I don't know. You see projects all the time where it's like, wow, that's been made amazingly. Like, but what was the idea? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Production level is really high, but it's just so gaudy and try. Like, you'd never consider making it, but then it absolutely sells gangbusters. Yeah. Yeah. Why did I? Why did I just swallow my pride and make you know like Scooby Doo with guns? <laughs> <laughs> but it looks great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Will and James, so much for coming on the chat. It's been a pleasure, and uh, I'm really excited for the game to come out. So I'll be looking out for that. So thank you so much for coming on the chat. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Terry. Thank you for lots of beautiful animation as well. Cool. <laughs> You're welcome. I can't wait to watch it when I'm playing the game. Is that going to be weird? It's, like, it's going to be fun. I'll be like, oh, no, they changed this, or they didn't do that right, or I did this wrong, or oh, God, this is in there, and they I animated this. It's probably going to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much. And if you're listening and you want to check out Cool Supper, who made Thank Goodness You're Here, you can follow them on Twitter at, at Cool Supper, and you can wish list the game on Steam. I'm going to include a link for that as well. And uh, if you would like, you can follow James Carba and all his silly animations and stories that he posts on Instagram. And I include a link for that as well. And thank you so much for listening. That's all for now. Okay, bye. <laughs>